What do you think is going to happen in the market this year? Is this uh, uptrend? Does it have legs? Will it continue? And what should people do? So I think, uh, you know, some things have happened recently and maybe a bit of a blessing in disguise. I, I'm not sure. But the, pass, the failure to pass the budget and the delay, it's actually going to cause a delay in spending, mm -hmm. yeah. which actually might work <laughs> in favor of the current economy sure. in the short term, mm -hmm. right? Um, we also do have, of course, elections coming up, and that's going to be a big boom. Even if it's just a midterm election, there still will be enough consumption there. Well, there'll be consumption, and much more than last year, because remember last year, as inflation went up, mm -hmm. people tended to hold back. They yeah. said, I'm not going to spend. And you saw capital, you saw consumption, discretionary consumption spending mm -hmm. yeah, going drop. Up. But not because people were poorer, or as a matter of fact, they have more money because sure. of the tax uh, breaks that people got last year. The thing is, they were smart and held back on spending, but that will be unleashed. Filipinos don't like to save, so it will be spent when, when we get more comfortable. We're trying to change that, you know? well, I agree. But I'm just saying. That's and, and, you know, it comprises over 70% of the economy anyway, so at the end of the day, yeah. any tick in that direction we should really help in terms oh, of spending. It'll, it'll definitely help. So the OFW remittance is important, the spending, the FDI. You know, we have a few big projects that are mm -hmm. going to kick off. The telco, third telco is going to yeah. kick off. The, Subway is going to kick off. Oh, well, we're understanding that the flows are starting to come in for some of these projects. Mm -hmm. So that's going to help as well. No? So right. you see the market at what level by mid-year and end-year? Well, we think fair value is around 8,500. No? Mm -hmm. And I think that's last year's starting yeah. point. Mm -hmm. We have The reason we think it's fair value is actually we we're brought down our, our, our where we think multiples should be. Mm -hmm. And we have this strong earnings growth. So. When you look at it on a peg ratio, peg ratio is the price earnings to growth, um, it's the best year in many because for the previous years, earnings growth has been single digit mm -hmm. yeah. and multiples have been above 20. So the peg ratio has been two. Very expensive. Sure. Today we're looking at 13% earnings growth mm -hmm. and markets at around 15 times. 1.2, something like that, probably mm -hmm. the best peg ratio we've seen in a long time. Well, there's value to be had, and, and like you said, the rising tide lifts all boats. Which sectors, though, in speci specifically stand out to you? Yeah, so we we think um, the three favorite sectors and, and where we're overweight versus mm -hmm. uh, indices today, we're active managers, so we don't just copy the index. Um, we're overweight the property, banking, and consumer yeah. sector. Mm -hmm. The change from last year is we were underweight consumer. Um, so this year we're gone back to overweight consumer and then the fourth sector is the industrial sector which is um, linked more to the PPP program no? or PPP mm -hmm. Build, build, build. build, build. <laughs> However you want to call it. <laughs> Either private or government spending. I hope this year more PPP actually. Less yeah. pressure on the government yeah, 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 to get yeah. things done. Yeah. No? Yeah. So what do you think, what is the best investment strategy? When the market is doing well, does everybody win? If you're in the market. If you're in the market. <laughs> that's the, and that's the most important yeah. strategy is make sure you're in. Uh -huh. I suppose it's now the question of if you're in portfolio allocation, what are you looking at? Uh, well, I, you know, first of all, if you're looking at equities and fixed income as mm -hmm. an asset allocation, clearly I think uh, fixed income has come into the fore where, you know, you can make a nice return of okay. five, six, seven sure. percent mm -hmm. with very little risk yeah. in, in a one year period. That hasn't existed in a, in a mm -hmm. long time. I mean, after the global financial crisis, interest rates were so low so, that exactly. it was very difficult to make money. So we think that if you're, uh, if you're looking just at a, a safe return of between 8 and 10 percent, a significant part of that portfolio should still be in fixed income because, mm -hmm. you know, you can get it with very low risk. Right. Um, so equities um, plays a role because if you wanted to get to 10, you probably needed sure. to get some equities in there. Um, and we think, like I said, there was upside of about 13% from the mm -hmm. beginning of the year for the market. Um, you know, my concern is that every time we, many times that we put a target there, it gets hit in like the first quarter <laughs> of the year. We'll be at 8,500 in March, March or April, and we'll be scratching our heads. So you went under problems and over now. This time. <laughs> right. um, I like what you said <laughs> earlier about, okay, so you know maybe you want to get in the market you want to be at this level but if you're not invested by this time if you're just thinking of investing the market already went up 20 percent from last year yeah you've, you've lost your upside there yeah. well again it's it's about being in the market long term that's the key this is mm -hmm. not a place to come and play 
oh, when it's hot, get in, because yeah. you'll just get burned. I mean, that's, it's, and most of the time, unfortunately, for, for retail investors, for individuals, they tend to come in when they when they hear people talking about it. Oh, by that and time by that already, time, you know. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're talking right about now. it now. It's already <laughs> exactly. up twenty percent from yes. when it started, yeah. right? Yeah. So, the thing is about getting invested and being in there. And then once you're in, you'll get a feel of what eight thousand means, for example, in the index. I mean, for many folks, eight thousand. I don't know what eight thousand means. For us, it means we've been at eight thousand four times yeah. in the last five years. I think we've touched it three or four yeah. times. So. We know that it's been very volatile over the mm -hmm. last few years. But we're at a starting point now where fundamentals are good, mm -hmm. valuations are fair, mm -hmm. earnings growth is good. Um, so from an internal factor point of view, things look okay. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe we don't have an aggressive, you know, super 20 plus percent year. Mm -hmm. But maybe we can sustain one or two years of growth at a reasonable pace. No, and, and for investors to hold on to their portfolio for that long so they can they get the best out of that cycle is something you'd advise. Well, I mean, I, for me, look at who's made the most money in the stock market is the owners of these companies. Why? They haven't sold their stock. Yeah, they put, well, they put faith. And some of them bought <laughs> back the stocks. One. I like that. And they're, <laughs> they're in been, it for the long haul. They're in it for the long haul. And they've been buybacks too. I mean, so you can see they're, they're, they're putting faith where they're, yeah, where they're And sometimes they buy, sometimes they yeah, sell. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying they always, they don't yeah. do anything, but of course they do. they're always there. Yeah, yeah so long-term um, capital appreciation is, 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 is already yeah. there, proven by the owners themselves, right? I mean, they're, they're the ones that made yeah. the most money. But here. as an active manager, does it work, does peso cost averaging work? You, do you just put a particular amount of I, I money think it every does. other week? I think it does. Say. Unfortunately, we're just not that disciplined, right? Uh -huh. So, and even myself, I mean, I, I kind of look, pick dates, like mm -hmm. my birthday, my kid's birthday. <laughs> I just do it on these important yeah, dates yeah. that make me feel good. And, <laughs> At least it's so frequency, right? Yeah, it's yeah. frequency. The most important Only if you have 12 kids. <laughs> well, <laughs> true. Um, you can pick other days too, right? But, uh, but I think you just have to do it consistently, regularly. Yeah. And mm -hmm. as you start following the market, then you'll get a feel of when you can be a little bit sure. more aggressive yeah. or less aggressive. And Wait until it touches 8,000 lower than 8,000 yeah, again. Yeah, I mean, but again, if you're not there, you won't know what these yeah, levels what mean, you know, and so the most important thing is get in. Now, the question about getting in is how. Yeah. That's another thing to yeah. challenge. I mean, do you buy individual stocks? Sure. Do you buy funds? What do you do? Mm -hmm. um, what do you do? I think you buy funds as a starter. Mm -hmm. um, so you're hedged and diversified. Yeah. Hedge, diversified. I mean, I, we were talking about my analogy of a driver on Edsa. If you're not confident about driving your car, there are crazy in drivers everywhere. <laughs> you ride a bus, but you can pick a bus that has a good driver. You sure. know, the bus company is a decent one. Mm -hmm. It's not going to break down. Yeah. Uh, they're not too aggressive. So you learn about the funds that you're that you that you might want to invest in by reading about them. But um, that's the best way to get in. Yeah. Um, you're diversified, you don't need a lot of capital to start. And once you get a feel of how the markets are, then you can, you'll learn a lot about the, these managers and what they choose yeah. and how they choose stocks and, and then you can apply that yourself. And then you can increase allocations that make the power of compounding work for you over time as a long-term investor. Yeah, I mean, it's, it sounds boring, you know, compounding every <laughs> yeah. month. But, but in the end of the but day... But the ones who've held their assets for longer. Just right? do it. Yeah. Just get in there. This is the time. The Philippines is in a growth spurt. Um, the next five to ten years looks to be quite promising. We're investing a lot in building our, our country up. Mm -hmm. Companies are making record profits. People are getting wealthier. That's it. That's the perfect be formula. Be part of it. Yeah, you got to be part of it. And and, um, and and if you don't get in, you're never. You know, yeah. that's. Never that, you, you can't talk about it. You, you, yeah. you know. Well, the elevator's still in the first few floors, you're saying, <laughs> of, of growth. So, yeah. Yeah. Philip, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Thank no, you my for pleasure. Coming. My pleasure.